As hunting is so complicated, some species of animals have specialized in robbery. Eggs are nutritious rations of pure energy, wrapped, ready to take away. Here in the Valdez Peninsula, the Magellan penguins have one of their breeding colonies. The females lay two eggs in the nests dug in the ground, and both parents take turns to defend them, while the other one goes into the sea to feed. But sometimes they don't quite coordinate their movements and the nest is left untended. Then the egg thieves spring into action. The screwers, or parasitic jagers, are true pirates. They constantly patrol the penguin colony, just waiting for one to make the fatal mistake. They are large, intelligent birds that could easily hunt or fish for themselves, but they have specialized in pillage. This strategy confirms the prevalence of the system of minimum effort in the natural world. For a skua, it makes more sense, from an energy conservation point of view, to steal eggs rather than flying long distances to fish. If they steal too many, they could wipe out the penguin colony. But it is more than likely that the skuas are the reason why the penguins lay two eggs instead of one. Both sides continue to hone their respective strategies. Eggs are packed with proteins and other nutrients, and the largest ones in the world, those of the ostrich, were around when those first hominids were evolving in Africa. Man also collected eggs, even before he reached the savannah. Eating eggs would seem to be a kind of intermediate stage between a vegetarian and a future hunter. It's just a short step from stealing an egg to killing the parent watching over it. But some animal thieves have permission from the owners to take what they find. This is one of them. This bird is called an oxpecker or tick bird and is a vital part of the personal hygiene of these buffaloes. In reality, the birds remove the ticks and other pesky parasites from their large friends, who in exchange provide them with protection and a good moving lookout point. This kind of association began when the birds took advantage of the insects the ruminants scared up as they walked. Then they began to eat the ones they spotted on their skin. But now some of these birds are acquiring a taste for the blood they eat along with the ticks, and they're starting to take it directly from any wounds. So we could be witnessing a friendship, which is about to end. On the other side of the world, on the plains of Venezuela, two other very different species have signed a similar contract. The capybaras await their turn for a session of parasite removal with this yellow-headed caracara, a relative of the eagles and falcons, which has also switched over to an easier source of food. These changes in the habits of certain animals may begin as anecdotic episodes and end up giving rise to a new species which little by little adapts to its new diet. Sometimes it is more difficult to imagine how certain associations of this type could have started. For example, this one. What led that first prawn to venture inside the mouth of a prawn-eating moray? The red and white colors of the arthropod identified it as a member of the maintenance team, something like the Red Cross of personal hygiene, and therefore it is forbidden to eat it. And the moray respects the pact, in exchange for having the parasites removed from inside its mouth, a place where normally nothing that goes in ever comes out. While this and other survival strategies were being developed, human beings completed their evolution and, thanks to their creative intelligence, were capable of imitating all the weapons of the other animals, and so became the most efficient predator ever known. But 
when we began to kill and destroy more than was absolutely necessary, going against our own interests as a species, we broke the rules of the game.